Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I wanted to talk to you about should you thin your acrylic paint? And if so, what would you use to thin that acrylic paint? There's a lot of different options out there. I'm going to talk about a few, and there's a few that I won't really go over, and I'm going to come back to that. But first off, let's answer the question, the kind of the broad question here. Should you thin your acrylic paint? Well, the answer kind of comes down to it depends. And I feel like that's the answer for a lot of things when it comes to art, but it really kind of depends on the type of painting that you are trying to make. Now, if you're trying to make a very thick painting, if you're trying to make something with a lot of depth, or if you're trying to make something that has layers, or something that has a lot of kind of like 3D feel to it, then the answer is no, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to thin that acrylic. In fact, let me show you a painting here that I actually didn't set aside beforehand, but I happen to have it. This is a Gerard Richter type painting where I layered several uh, colors over one another uh, in a scraped fashion. I did not thin out the acrylics because I wanted the layers. And if I had thinned them out, then they would have been kind of running. So it really kind of depends on the type of painting that you're creating. And so really, it comes down to whether or not you're trying to create more of a 3D type painting or a more liquid type painting. A painting where gravity would uh, do a lot of the work of creating that piece. So, should you use it if you're creating a normal painting? Probably not. But if you're creating some type of gravity painting, which we're going to cover in just a moment, then the answer would be yes, you would want to thin out those acrylics. Now, let's talk about a few things that I will not be going over uh, because I have not done a, a whole lot. I have done a few dozen um, paintings where the paint was thinned out, but a lot of the paint paintings that I do uh, with the gloss enamel, the gloss enamel is either not thinned out or it's thinned out with just a little bit of water, but we're going to talk about acrylic because I did start with acrylic and I do use it from time to time. So a couple of things that I won't really go into. One, I'm not going to go into silicone or alcohol. A lot of people tend to use silicone and alcohol for a lot of poured paintings because the alcohol tends to create uh, the cells. If you've ever seen a poured painting with a lot of like cells where they're like big blotches of color, uh, a lot of this is created with alcohol. So people will add alcohol to the paint and when it dries, it, it kind of like bursts or pops and it creates those cells. Now a lot, it can create the cells without it, but it tends to make a lot of cells. So people tend to use it for that reason. Uh, the other thing is to use silicone. I've never used silicone, so I couldn't really say uh, what the advantage of it is or, or why you would use it uh, specifically. I just know a lot of people that do use silicone. So that is also another option uh, maybe for poured paintings. Again, I have not used it so I can't really vouch for that. So I'm not going to be talking about those two things, although those are very common uh, for people to add. So let's talk about the type of paintings that you would use uh, you know, some kind of additive for. And then we're going to talk about also the three. So actually, let's, let's go ahead and cover the, the three main materials that there are and I don't have them on hand because I don't tend to use them so any of the two of the three I will actually just put a picture on the screen for you to kind of visualize um, what what it is that I'm talking about okay so the first thing that you can use to thin uh, acrylic paint and this is very common is just water just simple water. I use tap water sometimes to dilute some of my paints, so it's not really that big a deal. Now the amount of water obviously kind of changes how liquidy the paint is, and that really affects the paint itself. You know, if you add too much, then it can become kind of just colored water as opposed to paint. So here's the thing. Water, I feel like, is, is fine to use on acrylics especially if you're just trying to get a little bit more movement out of it. And again, I will talk about the type of paintings that you can do with some of these different chemicals. But water is fine if you're creating just a very thin coat on a painting uh, and you know, you're just trying to get a little bit more coverage out of it, water is fine. Here's the caveat. When you add water, water breaks down the pigment 
inside the acrylic paint. So if you put acrylic paint, uh, you know, say in a container, and then you add a little bit of water and you kind of mix it in, what happens is, is that the water separates the binders inside the paint. Every acrylic paint, uh, oil paint, doesn't really matter. Paint has binders in it. And, and the binders are basically what takes the pigment and the actual, you know, materials that the paint is made out of and puts them together. And when you add water, it tends to kind of break that apart. And if you use water to thin out your paint, this is why if, you ever, if you've ever used water for acrylic paint and then painted with it, it's very thin, it's very transparent. It, you know, you can see, you can almost see through it. And if you use really cheap acrylics, you can actually see little chunks inside of it. The reason is, is because if you use cheaper paints, uh, you're going to see those chunks because a lot of cheaper paints tend to have more filler in them than high quality paints. In fact, give me one second. So I'm, gonna, I'm off screen, so you can't really see me, um, but we're going to talk about this actually. Okay, so I'm going to show you three different paints, and I'm going to talk about them. Okay, so here we go. There, I have three paints here. They're all acrylic. Uh, the first is Artist Loft. This is a Michaels brand exclusive. This is Michaels brand of paint, okay, and it's very cheap. There are cheaper ones. But this is a cheap brand of paint that's acrylic and uh, they do have some great colors and if you're just doing regular uh, you know acrylic type paintings it works it works they've got some great colors um, so i'm not going to bash the paint but it is cheap okay it's got a lot of filler in it next we go to liquitex and liquitex is a better brand um, slightly better than you know the michaels brand it's got less filler but it still has a decent amount of filler in it and you can tell because when the paint dries, you can tell how kind of cheap the paint is by color fastness. And color fastness is basically how it looks when it goes on versus how it looks when it dries. And if a color retains the same exact color or very close to the same color as it went on, as it does when it dries, then the color fastness is very high. You know, it's got a lot of color fastness. The problem with Liquitex Basics is that it looks, you know, very dark, very, very vibrant, very glossy when it goes on. And then when it dries, it kind of dulls out. It's not as dry, you know, it's not as dark as it was before. So it loses some of that color fastness. But again, that's also because of the binders, because it has more binders in it. Cheaper paint tends to have more binders in it than, say, high quality paint like Golden or, uh, you know, the New, New Earth or Newman or... I forget what it's called. I, I don't I don't normally use it, but I know it's like and something. Anyway, uh, okay, so then you also have, you know, Liquitex Professional. So regular Liquitex is different than Liquitex Professional because they do have professional, you know, grade paint. And it, again, it's less filler. So it's just something to keep in mind that when you buy paint, uh, if you buy cheaper quality paint, it's not that you can't create decent looking art with cheap paint. You definitely can. In fact, a professional artist could still paint the Mona Lisa with cheap paint. That, it's not about the technique. It's about the quality of the paint afterwards. So how light fast is it? How color fast is it? You know, so anyway, coming back to thinning the paint. If you add water to cheap acrylic paint, it is going to break up some of that binders and it's going to make it transparent when it goes on, when it dries. But it's also it could also put, produce chunks in the paint where you're seeing the little bits of, of binder that are actually broken off because you added water. Okay, so now if you use higher quality paints, say you use golden or you use a, you know, a high, um, you know, some other high quality brand or even, a, you know, a professional line of Liquitex. If you use something that's higher quality with less binder and less filler, and then you add a little bit of water, it's still going to retain much of its color fastness. So you're not going to see as much of that problem. So water can be fine. Just know that it can create it. It's going to leave, make that, that paint more transparent and it could break up those binders. Okay. So that is water. It's, it's fine, it can work, you have to test it for yourself. The second thing is Flow Extender, and I'm gonna put a picture of it here. A lot of people use Floetrol, there's other brands though. I think even, uh, you know, Liquitex has a Flow Extender. Basically, what Flow Extender was created before was something like paint, 
paintbrush or airbrush type paint where it's making the paint thinner um, but it's still keeping the color of it so it kind of breaks down the binder a little bit but you still have the color well the floaterol or flow extender is more for pouring the paints but getting better coverage with color but not as thick as you'll know, say regular acrylic paint. So flow extender can be good because it, it gives you better coverage and you still get good color, but it's more about spreading it out over a better layer with color as opposed to keeping the consistency of that color. And so flow aid or flow extender or floater all, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to use, flow extender basically just extends the paint so that when you paint on a surface it, it it allows it to go out more and you're going to keep a lot of the color but it's going to be more transparent but as opposed to water when it becomes more transparent you also keep a lot of the color as opposed to it just kind of thinning out and being more like uh you know if you were looking at it through tracing paper or something like that right it's going to keep a lot of that color because it, it doesn't it doesn't break those binders apart it just stretches them out okay the last thing that you can kind of add that that's very common is pouring medium so liquitex also has a pouring medium and there should be a picture on screen pouring medium is exactly what it sounds like you would use it mostly for poured paintings and so with pouring medium it doesn't give you the range as far as the like flow extender right or water it's not going to give you as much coverage however it does retain a lot of the binders and, and the color that's in the paint. Um, it keeps a lot more of that. So it's going to go on thicker and not go as far as, say, flow extender or even a lot of water. But it's going to give you better color and gloss. So when you use pouring medium uh, with, mixed with acrylic paint, you're going to get you know more movement than you would with the acrylic paint by itself, but you're also going to get very good color out of it. So probably better color than say the Flow Extender, however, not as great as coverage. So it's kind of, you know, it really, it really kind of comes down to what you're using. If you're using a cheaper paint, you'd probably want to use a uh, Flow Extender or Pouring Medium, depending on what you're trying to do. So, and then this kind of brings me to my last point. It really depends on the type of painting that you're doing. So if you're doing something where it's a poured painting, again, it's up to you. A lot of people use silicone or, or, or alcohol or whatever. But if you were choosing between the three, you can just use a little bit of water if you just want a little bit of movement. But if you want a lot of movement, if you're going to do a whole painting that's poured, I would recommend probably the pouring medium because it's going to give you the better color once it dries. Uh, but if you really want it to expand out as much as possible, that's when you would use the extender. So that would, that would depend on what you're trying to do. More likely the pouring medium. So the flow extender would be more as if you were just putting a little bit of paint on a piece of paper or canvas or whatever, and you were trying to really stretch that out and get it to cover a wide area but you also are okay with it being kind of transparent, uh, kind of see-through, and still retaining great color, but being very thin, very transparent, that kind of thing. So that's, that's when you would use Flow Extender. Uh, lastly, you would just use water if you were just, you know, adding a little bit of water to kind of maybe get it to move a little bit better or to spread it out. Maybe to, maybe you're doing a normal acrylic painting. You're not doing poured or you're not doing like drips or lines or anything like that. Uh, if you just use a little bit of water, you know, it's going to help you kind of cover a larger area. So that makes a lot of sense. Just adding just a tiny bit of water to cover a better area, but you could also use water to add to acrylic paint if you're doing something like a base coat. So if you were going to base coat, say a whole canvas one color, adding a little bit of water uh, to kind of break it up and to get it to move, to, to be able to thin it out, to cover that whole canvas, that makes a lot of sense because if you're just doing a thin base coat, then that might work for you. Or if you were doing something where you were doing some kind of minimalist painting where you were doing a lot of overlapping layers but you want them to be very transparent water again would make a lot of sense for that because you're going to keep going over those layers so water in that sense makes sense again something to think about for water 
is just that if you use cheaper paints, it has a tendency to break up or just be very, very, very transparent, just like muddy water, as opposed to higher grade paints, which have less filler in them. So even if you add water to a high grade paint, it just doesn't break down like the same way. You know, it does thin it out, but it retains a lot of that same color. So that's pretty much it, guys. I wanted to talk about some of these different things that you could add to paint uh, because someone asked it in one of the comments of one of my videos. So I wanted to talk about that and kind of the differences. So it really kind of comes down to what you're trying to do. You do use flow extender if you're trying to do very thin, uh, colorful layers. You would use pouring medium if you were doing poured paintings, obviously, if you want that really thick, glossy uh, feel to it, like you almost want to see it like plastic, that would be pouring medium. Or if you just want to thin it out to get more coverage and you're okay with very thin uh, coats, then you would use water. Again, I haven't really used, uh, I actually have used alcohol in poured paints. I didn't like it because the way that alcohol works is alcohol dries very quickly and it also can kind of, I don't know, almost burn the paint. And it seems like because it evaporates so quickly, uh, it just leaves like a weird uh, feeling to the paint after it dries. Some people are okay with that. I don't like it. Um, I don't like the way that it, it, it kind of takes to the paint. So that's just a personal experience. Again, I've never used silicone, so I couldn't say whether or not that's good or, or how that works. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I wanted to talk about this, you know, this topic, should you thin out your acrylic paint because I feel like it's, you know, it's a common thing. And, and while I don't do a whole lot of it on my channel, I have done it and I kind of wanted to talk about it maybe for you guys who are considering doing acrylic paintings, uh, maybe poured or whatever, but that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed. I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care guys.